Why the long face, Grubby? <laughs> Maybe he's born with it. So excited for this match. This is our grand final of W. Uh, Snowkiss said Moon loses focus in long series these days. Actually, I believe it's, and I don't know how reliable this is, but I believe it's been proven scientifically with science that everyone loses true concentration within 5, 10, 15 minutes. Like, no one can hold it truly for that long. Uh, like, actual full focus. So, it's science, man. Science, energy, science, energy. Uh, it may not be my voice that changed, Shady Fox. Actually, when you use different microphones, your voice can sound very different. So it's hard for you to know without knowing me in real life or IRL. Dalang says, looking forward to watching it with you. Keep up the great stream. Thank you very much. You know when I kept up the great stream once? After a long night of going out, I went for like two minutes. Hey, Vivi Aurora and Shady Fox, you have the new badge. Can you see it? And if not, can you refresh? Then you can see it. Change his mind and now he's going for the natural. Like you like it? <laughs> ugly abo lol. It's meant to be ugly. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, proper analyze now, yeah? Yeah, you too, Mucho. Let's proper analyze. So we're gonna look uh, mostly from Happy's point of view. And I think I'll just mute the game sound and play a soft Warcraft 3 OST backdrop, okay? I think that'll be the most conducive to uh, focusing. Love the one month badge. Time to stay cute and listen. Oh, glad you like it. Okay, let's focus. So, Happy basically, he goes here straight away and let's see how he uses his Acolyte. He wants to see where the Keeper is. Keeper goes straight to the natural. Acolyte draws a few hits, wants to buy as much time as possible, which increases the chance of getting a successful death coil. And Happy just teched with the three ghoul tech. That's a miss. I knew that's gonna miss too. It looks like in the first game of uh, a series, same as against TH, his coil micro and sense was a little worse. And I can only imagine it's because of nerfs. That's double coil miss already. Bustin' Jeeber, thank you very much for subbing and congrats on the abomination. Playing filthy human music on Monday Monday. <laughs> but it's so good. First game doesn't count. Sadly, tournaments don't agree with that. Thank you so much for subbing Faisa and Luki Designs. Greetings, friend. Thank you very much. A lot of fake coils by Happy. Oh, he's level 1.25. His food count says he actually lost his echo and then remade uh, a fourth ghoul. So he's not doing the early creep fiends, obviously. It would be suicide against Keeper to go early. Oh! To go early creep fiends. So five ghouls now. I saw it live as well. Not the start of this game, though. I tuned in a little bit later. I missed a few moments because someone came to the door as well and stuff. Greetings, friend. Happy Lost versus both Moon and TH only on Echo. Is it bad map for Undead? 
Uh, Happy seems to not mind it too much. He thinks there's worse maps. I would expect him to remove Amazonia or something. But it looks like he removed... I didn't see Last Refuge in the pool. So probably he removed Last Refuge. Hodor. So he goes back all the way with the Death Knight. This is a moment that could give me anxiety. Where I'm there with the... <laughs> And still detonate after four fakes. Oh, tear in a stand? Oh, that makes sense. So is it actually Night Elf that removes Last Refuge? Yeah, I know. The new sign is live, the video gaming. Happy's tournament was very al dente. Yeah, he made sure to turn all the undead into the undeadable. Every fake is more distance, yeah. Uh, Devotion Aura is already plenty strong, Kyle Roan. No one is calling for Devotion Aura to be better. Like, literally no one. So let's not add random spell resistance to it. <laughs> Okay, so the Lich second creeps the marketplace. It's a little bit hard to see what Happy sees on the map, but it looks like he has a skeleton bottom right. So he actually knows that probably uh, Moon is creeping his natural right now. And scroll the beast. Not a great item against Night Elf. Anytime you find an item that can be removed with one or two wisps, it's not what you would prefer. This I found so interesting. He used this... Um, Holy crap, Moon looks so old. I don't think so. He's always had eye bags, even when he was 18. Okay, if that makes him look old, then fine. But who cares, man? It's moon, Jesus. So, uh, double slaughterhouse. Uh, I found that very interesting. And Happy is committing no units. Uh, he sold the scroll of the beast for a clause. Happy figured if I don't commit any units, I can't lose any. So he only goes with magic immunes uh, or mechanicals. Three statue, destroyer upgrade, disease cloud. And then he can get Fiend with Web or Abomination. But he does this start. And he wouldn't do this start against Ancient of Wind, would he? Rushing for Destroyers and A-bombs. So I'm not 100%. I guess he scouts for Hunter's Hall. Like he played this Double Slaughterhouse strat again later and it was amazing. But it's probably he scouts, 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 Hunter's Hall or not. If it is Hunter's Hall, he will get double slot here. If he gets, no, not three random claws. He bought one of them, Reven. So he sees Hunter's Hall, double slaughter. He sees no Hunter's Hall, probably more wisps as well. Because this is just five archers. So you have to count how much tier one someone has. If he sees more archers and no hunters hall, then he would save up three Cryptians at home, web and one or two statues. Thank you, A, A Faber. Uh, is this live? I am. They aren't. And of course, if you're watching this in the rerun, I am no longer live either. But my current lifetime is 2117, Monday, the 1st of July. Greetings, friend. T 
Tea Castle Chen. Tea Castle Chen. Tea Castle Chen. It's like little teapot. Thank you for subbing. And Mufai, thank you for subbing. So Panda power crept to level three. Happy <laughs> four claws of attack. Okay, this is interesting. A little bit of rewind. So happy finish the Mer camp. So he does the Murloc camp, defends the keeper harass, gets the mercenary camp, walks past the natural, sees it's been crept, expands there. Goes to the middle, gets invo, has four claws of attack. Keeper, of course, has three. He goes in with the four claws. He's got four frenzy ghouls and one A-bomb with disease cloud. So he would love to split his ghouls against drunken haze and stuff. Uh, he's just sending the lich on lich duty. Two hits and dead, lol. So much damage. A uh, pretty weak spell combo by Moon, but really just trying to buy a bit of time. Needs to get his Baloo's out. Baloo the bear, give me strength. Very liberal with his mana usage. Coil Nova for a single archer. Very patient by Happy. It feels so good for Happy right now. Roughly equal food. Roughly equal levels. Roughly equal items. Counter expanding. Killing non-stop wisp, losing almost nothing. Kills the entangled. So good micro. Still has a lot of mana on DK, but nothing on Lich. This feels so good for Happy. Looks like he has a stranglehold on Moon. Moon can only pump out very small amounts of units now. Was that a hippogriff I spy? I spy with my little eye a hippo on the fly. <laughs> so more statue and a bomb. So I guess he's like massing destroyers, which he did one game against an orc against focus as well. And it didn't go that well either. Seems like massing destroyers hasn't been working out that well for him. And he always does it in the first game. Somehow Moon eked out his supply advantage while being down Econ, but that's because Happy still has to catch up with infrastructural investments in his natural. Thank you, blah blah bloom, and yes, that's true, I did see it, most of it. Didn't see this game though, not how it started. Just the end. So, when, when Dryads attack the Lich, his attack speed is reduced as well. And so he isn't as scary. But he has pretty low attack speed in general. Without a gloves, those claws aren't as cool. It just gets hard keeping the destroyers alive, really, at this point. Not a single crit fiend. Without fiends, destroyers can't hit bears. And without hitting bears with destroyers, they're just better than A-bombs. At this moment, normally, I would call the time of death after this skirmish. Tinker comes out. A-bombs are just not very good in terms of stats. Their strength is a bit of tanking, something more sustainable than crit fiends. Aye! Oh, wah, wah, wah. And also disease cloud, but you don't need five of them to get disease cloud. Do you think Moon should have tried Warden on this map? It's hard to say. Maybe it can work, but you need to have practiced Warden. Warden is possible in two matchups against Undead and Human. Echo is one of her better maps, it's true. But should he have? It's clear that he put a lot of effort and time and practice in Keeper play. 
and he's been so good with it so I don't think he should do it just because this didn't work he didn't know if this is going to work in a best of five right like it's a big risk to suddenly invest mass in warden just because really keeper got a little sorry. nerf he's been practicing this for more than a year it's very valuable you keep learning things about it and improving it oh my god that bear stayed alive so I've been thinking about swapping Corruption Orb to Death Knight instead of Lich and then use both heroes to auto attack hippos. And although that makes sense on paper, and that's how we used to view the game as a beginning player, that an orb must always be on a melee hero because that's part of the value component. And then maybe you can take down hippos. But really, undeads don't use Death Knight that way to stand an auto. It's risky, they take too much damage. Death Knights actually do very few auto attacks in fights. Good undeads anyway. And it seems strange, because you would think the better you are, the more you know how to get away with it, when to get away with it, and so on and so forth. But really, when you do that, you're just asking to take random damage and then get surrounded suddenly and, and killed off. Hippos will be by Destro though, should be quite close to DK. Yeah. I think anytime you rely on taking down full HP Hippogriffs, it does make his attack ranged. That's true. But it's... Okay. It's still good for Hippos, yes. The problem is, you can never again have ranged orb. So, say for instance, your Lich is attacking enemy Dryads, or like you've taken care of the Hippos, or they temporarily fly away, or there's something more important. You do three autos with Abomination on enemy Keeper, and your Lich hits it as well, because Lich can choose whoever he wants to attack in a fight. Like, you can literally decide, you're gonna have armor debuff, one second later it's true. But if the DK says, right now I don't want to be attacking a Hippo because I just lost all my destroyers, it will take such a long time for DK to get that auto off, and that's gonna cost you dozens of points of damage in armor debuff loss. Uh, it just... Yeah, it doesn't feel good to have Orpal melee as undead. Yes, we're doing all the Happy Moon games, then we're gonna play as good as Happy. Yeah, he really missed uh, a way to deal with Hippogriffs at this point. Ah, yeah, I, this is where I started watching. This is where I came into the series. And then he added like two gargoyles to deal with like four Hippos or whatever. Oh, that Tinker, that Tinker gate down. Ah, the Tinker lives. Why Tinker? Yeah, Tinker, Tinker is really good against Elf. The orb, uh, the, the blockage against bears, the clockwork goblins auto attacks, the tankiness that the Tinker, the factory and the clockwork goblins provide together. It's one of the most numerous summons. You have the Tinker, the Clockworkers, and the Factory. That's a lot of summons. You could say, well, just go Beastmaster and make Quill Pigs. But actually, the explosion of the Clockworkers is exactly what you need against Bear Dryad. It's better than Quill Pig. Plus, and I think this one might be most important of all, Dryads will unsummon any summon you make with Abolish Magic but you cannot unsummon clockwork goblins. Although you can, when you unsummon them, they will still do guaranteed explosion damage. Plus they're so numerous and free that it doesn't have the same impact. We're gonna watch Moon 120 on Wednesday, when it's Night Elf Day. Because obviously this is the finals, Moon Beat 120. So I'll watch Night Elf win on Wednesday. I don't know if Clockwork Goblins count as being mechanical, but either way you can dispel them, yes. Please no spoiler. This is the Grand Finals, mate! You're on the internet! I 100% respect people with lives 
where they can't watch things right away, but they want to maintain the suspense of watching the match in their own time with full uh, surprise factor. But it's just not realistic in this world. If don't visit social media, don't visit streams, control your own conditions. You can't expect everyone else to bend to your desires. To be honest, I hate anti-spoiler culture with a passion. In Heroes of the Storm, the European team would beat a Korean team, it'd be huge news, and the mods cracked down and deleted everything on Reddit that showed anything, any happiness, any support, delete everything, because everyone needs to be protected from spoilers. So you want to discuss how cool that move was? Shut up. The amount of upvotes of a clip showed, oh yeah, well, people are gonna be happiest about Europeans winning, so the amount of upvotes already spoiled me, thanks. I was gonna watch it in four weeks from now. 100% respect it, but take care of yourself and your own responsibilities in, in controlling th those conditions. It literally created anti-hype in Heroes of the Storm tournaments and I don't want to contribute to the lack of hype for Happy's victory in this tournament. There, I said it. Wow, oh, so close on Keeper. He was just checking, am I gonna get auto-attacked again? Wow, that was really, really, really well done by Moon. The game is not over yet, but the game is over. You don't have to get so serious about it, Grubby. We just wanted you to host the game for us that didn't watch it, kind of. I know, I know, I'm sorry. You can tell I got emotional, right? But that's because of the pat. I mean, yeah, that's... I am emotional about it, because I tried to fight the culture in Heroes of the Storm, I was a caster and I was a streamer in HOTS. And it was very frustrating to be at events and you watch Fnatic beat MVP Black for the first time. The atmosphere at the tournament is electric and you open Reddit just because you wanna feel what people are feeling. You wanna experience top sports together and hear what the community has to say about it. It was an amazing community. And you see these threats pop up, boom, 10 threats mu mushroomed up to the top of Reddit. Fnatic did it, Fnatic did it, Europe, Europe. Then everything got deleted. And I tried to talk to the Reddit mods and uh, you know, they're just playing it safe. Make sure no one is uh, annoyed by the spoilers. That was just so anti-hype. So I am emotional about it because I felt it was damaging. I'm trying to protect the culture of professional sports enjoyment and hype. I was gonna watch that tonight. <laughs> and when you tune into a stream and you're just ready to be upset by the first person that spoils, it's like you're looking for trouble. I know you're not really looking for trouble. I know there's legitimate real wholesome experiences and desires behind it but it's like you're looking for trouble though you're not really yeah you could make the thread co be called hot tournament final game discussion spoiler however when it has high upvotes a european one when it has low upvotes a korean one so they would censor even that sometimes plus it's it's as bland as bland can be I want to make a threat. Fnatic scorch their balls off. You know, that's like more, it has more uh, personality than uh, discussion of game spoiler, you know? Happy's food recovered miraculously. This is crazy. 73 versus 79. But as the casters did point out, the bears are upgraded too, too. That's true, Stelch and Leifer. I was actually a little sensitive to GOT spoilers as well. 
but that's simply because not everyone in the same time zone can watch already. Plus, I didn't have as much desire to discuss GOT. Like, I guess I was excited about it, but not as needing. Like, now we're literally watching it together. So it's very hard to avoid. No, I understand. And please uh, don't think that I'm not understanding the anti-spoiler desire. I do understand it. I just think if you get your anti-spoiler, great. People looked out for you. They were they were sensitive and stuff. But don't be surprised if you accidentally get spoilered because I can't control everyone in this chat here. And I can't like watch my every word. Like this is the grand final. So whoever they face, they beat them, right? And the fact that I'm watching this on Monday and then I'm watching Moon against 120 on, on Wednesday, like it's pretty obvious I'm looking at the at the winners. So Moon lost nothing, Happy lost everything. So this game is over, we're gonna go to the next. This game was really freaking cool. Do you believe Happy is the best player in the world? Yeah, I do. And here's my philosophy for best player in the world. Whoever won the last legitimate major tournament with intercontinental attendance and relevant prize money is the best player in the world. But he didn't face player C who fell by the wayside in the other group. He would have had a trouble with player C. Doesn't matter. He didn't make it to the finals. But the tournament was rigged. The brackets were set up. Doesn't matter. You won the tournament. Greetings. You're the best player in the world. What other metric do we have? Your rank on ladder. Psh. Psh. Player C though. Didn't make it to the final. Yeah. Happy and 120 didn't play. So maybe 120 is the best on that. Even though Happy beat everyone that 120 didn't. Uh, well, they, they were unfamiliar with his style. Like, okay. So Happy is the best player in the world right now. And I would say that remains to be true for days and weeks until you can see a significant drop off of his level or a significant rise in the level of some of his competitors. When you see that, then you can say, hmm, I'm not sure anymore. Maybe someone else is. And also when the next tournament comes along, of the same caliber as WGL and someone else wins it and Happy didn't qualify, then Happy won't be the best anymore. Maybe Happy didn't choose to qualify. He didn't choose to participate. Then you'll start to have fans disagree with one another and yet Happy won't be the best player in the world anymore because it's all about winning the biggest tournament. At that time, you're the best. In theory, you could be so draconic as to say that the very next day, everyone is a new challenger. Happy was the best player in the world on Sunday. Today's Monday. Is he still? Let's see next tournament. I mean, that's pretty uh, Spartan. But yeah, he is at this time. So are we still going to in-depth analyze those games or not? Yes, sorry. We started talking about other things again, weren't we? I love answering uh, questions from chat though. Like it's fun and yeah, I'm drinking tea. But yeah, let's go back fully into the game. So uh, what's different this game is two things. Moon crept gradually to level 2.25 from the two main starter camps. The natural creep camp that he's doing now is too powerful to tackle immediately with double treants and ancient and an archer Greetings. he did do this on echo happy saw that he sees this as well did he steal wait a second no he did not steal uh happy saw that so when the night elf decides to go ah, when the night elf decides to go immediately for natural happy must act and harass he did this on echo Greetings. but he failed both coil steals do it again maybe it will go better maybe it will go worse in this time he saw gradual creeping it's a relatively small level of creeps therefore immediate coil harass is not quite likely to be very effective 
Instead, Happy went for his own creeping, leaving part of the turtles for two reasons. One, he just wanted the item, come here. Two, he saw Moon started on the natural. So he decided to come then. Here, nice splitting with the skeleton by Happy, never giving a double skeleton uh, detonate. Finally, Moon did this. Okay, this is interesting. At this time, Moon could entangle and surround the Death Knight, but the Death Knight does have 400 health. The tree doesn't have a lot of life anymore. Even if Moon fails to surround, if he does decide to entangle, and he's probably gonna succeed the surround, but if he does uh, do entangle, all DPS stops on the tree anyway. So I think Happy made a very good lay down in poker terms to decide he's not gonna be able to get that tree. Uh, there are two other places to place the Tree of Life, where the Keeper is now, roughly, on the other side of the pond, and at the green camp. Those are easier for Happy to attack and easier, harder for Moon to defend. Because he built it here, it will take him longer to expand, but it's the safe way to do it, and he was able to protect his Tree of Life. Is there any reason why the game is presented in Chinese language, not an English one? Uh, that's because Moon... Ah, that's because Back to Warcraft is piggyback, piggybacking on this broadcast. This is a Chinese first tournament. And they're sending the clean feed to Back to Warcraft. So it's literally a video transfer, not uh, Back to Warcraft doing their own observing. So it's piggybacking. The Observer was very good for this game, yeah. I do hope that WGL keeps spots for Americas. There's nothing more damaging than a community that devours its own grassroots by calling a region dead or bad. America isn't as good as Europe, therefore they shouldn't have qualification Region spots. Spread. Yeah, they never will be able to grow as a stronger region, which would be great for everyone. It's very small time thinking to say they don't deserve spots. Under that reckoning, before I became good in Warcraft, Netherlands shouldn't have got any spots because we don't have any good players. Then I would have never got opportunities to play and then Netherlands would have never been great. Uh, yeah, everyone deserves spots. Like, if you give spots to a region for 20 tournaments and they still don't perform and don't care, then you could turn it down, you know? But it's nice to have greater inclusivity. So at this point, happy. Level 2.6, 2.7 on the DK. Lich level 1. He finishes his uh, goblin shop, which he's staffed of teleported to. He's again got double slaughterhouse and he goes on the hunt. He did some good skeleton scouting and he wants to stop the panda creeping. And on this map, and this is Happy's pick, remember, on this map, there aren't that many easy camps for panda to take. The moon, the moon, the night elf is going to move his ancient of war to the goblin laboratory. For the rest, it's pretty much natural and goblin shop. So Happy goes to the most obvious next camp, goblin shop. Panda is now level one and stuck at level one because there's nothing within reach to creep. And Happy comes here. He has no real hopes to kill the Tree of Life. He even ignores the panda to begin with. Doesn't try some kind of surround. For him, it's all about threatening tree and then killing archers. Look at that. It's not about the tree. It's about archers. He wants to force a response. No dust of appearance, though. So he can't kill that one archer yet. Relentless coil no buying. I'm actually... Uh... Yeah. He got only one archer. Then he comes in with statues up to three. Goes for a super quick destroyer. Pretty much about as quick as you can. Very small ghoul numbers. Note how he never committed his ghouls. About four months ago we saw 120 doing a DK Naga style with a number of ghouls. Trying to reset archer count to prevent Hippogriff Rider Flood. Obviously Happy scouted again this game. Saw there was an absence of Ancient of Wind style. Comes in with the Lich. This is so sick. Would you dare to attack with a lich and double statue, no DK, into a full army? 
Like, what if he gets entangled around it? But at all times, Happy has a really good awareness of where the keeper is, how likely he is to be entangled around it, and it just didn't happen. So now Moon entangles the Lich. A large part of that is just reducing the damage of the Lich. Happy has only coil level 1, but together with statues, looks to be enough. In comes the first destroyer. Well, land experience is very important for uh, lesser regions, Rene Roman, in order to practice. People learn a lot from land attendances. I look at Ente and Side. They did some lands recently and they got a lot better as well. It helps to go to LAN. Comparing it with soccer can have useful comparisons, but uh, it's really very different because in football, teams have very robust training regimes and infrastructures. The comparison is so uh, yeah, tilted, I guess. They can practice live against their own B squads or other teams. Uh, players never get to experience out of stadium practice, which is essentially LAN. The away stadium practice is literally when they get a chance to get invited to a tourney like this. Why do Undead go A-bomb instead of Fiends? Doesn't Fiend counter Dryad? Fiends counter Dryads, but they take a lot of damage from Treants, Entangle, and Bears. A-bombs with Disease Cloud can pressure Dryads in, a, in the long run, and they don't die as easily to Drunken Haze Fire Breath, Entangle, Treants, and so on. It's funny actually, because I also thought that you need some Crypt Fiends. Uh, so my most recent true methodology for Undead Night Elf was double Crypt Fiend. No more than two. I used to make more, it was bad. Two Crypt Fiends. Um, and then stop. Then go to Slaughters. Happy doesn't even make two anymore. And then I thought that against Human, you should uh, not make so many Crypt Fiends. But Happy like makes 10 Crypt Fiends against Humans. <laughs> even against Mass Defend. So this was actually a funny moment. Look at this. Did you see this? Chuddy taught me this. You guys know Chuddy, Afon Lord. The tree is fighting. Suddenly, TP. Now, Staff of Teleport disables the arriving target, like the anchor point. Town Portal does not disable the anchor point. The fact that tree stops hitting proves this is a staff of teleport. They have the same animation, but they affect the tree differently. This has always been true, but I was never cognizant of it until Chuddy, my analyst, who will never go to Yemen, taught me about this. So Happy actually moves back. So he's he's like baited by it as well. In the very moment that he moves back, the teleport animation stops. Moon cancels his staff of teleportation and Happy realizes he got jabated. Cost him two seconds. And had he not moved back, he would kill it now already, instead of in a few seconds. Maybe he would have killed it two seconds ago. Why didn't Moon make hippos though? I'm not sure Garks can win against Panda second. Like, do you mean in general, why didn't Moon go Moss Fairy Dragon style? You'll get an answer to that later on in this series. He will try both and he's deciding based on the maps. Actually going Fairy Dragon on this map is quite risky because uh, uh, um, if the Undead does go for Gargs, they can take the Dragon really easily. But there must be other reasons as well. Uh, there are two strats. At the end of the day, Moon will try to play the one he thinks someone has least experience against or least effective strategy against. Can you TP and use stop attack command by pressing hold to fake? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe you can't stop attacking with tree, but I don't think so. Uh, you, it'll look like this, not like going back to the stand formation, but it, he'll like be stopping. So you would still not be fooled. No, actually, no, you cannot give new commands to a tree that's getting staff of teleported on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, yeah, when you TP on it, you would give stop commands, yeah. Well, you can't do that. Maybe you could make a wisp. 
but you can't make a wisp on the staff of Telly. So if you see they're making a wisp, then you know it's a real TP. So like either way, the defender, I mean, the attacker would always know what's happening. This is a good info too by the bear. The bear said he saw his pal Laliat getting wrecked by Happy with that strat. This is true. This is true. He saw Happy dispatch Laliat's fairy dragon strat already. And Moon or already won the first game with Bear Dryad. Why wouldn't he play it again? So it looks like Happy is not necessarily uh, needing to leverage Kripvian's attack or even Lich plus A-bomb to kill Dryads. Like he's not deliberately right-clicking Dryads with Abominations. The Abominations kind of just stand there and shamble around. He just uses Lich to attack Dryads, period. And the rest he's focused on preservative micro. Conserve everything, defend. Look at this. <laughs> so nice dodge. This was interesting because Happy is 1200 gold and this is a pre 50 max meat wagon. My general rule is no siege before you break 50. But Happy actually has a wagon in his 50 food army and he feels so comfortable with everything that has happened so far that he's staying on 50. And it makes sense, right? Because he killed the tree of life. So there's no time pressure anymore. But is it Dryad's bears? <laughs> That's true, Chaddy. See guys, this is why he's so genius. He sees things others don't. There are no bears. <laughs> True. Is there a guideline figure for what you should bank at 50 before breaking upkeep? No Shady Fox, because it is all about whether you can win now lose now save up uh is anyone transitioning uh, the reason happy stays on 50 is because what he has now is enough to put realistic pressure and he's waiting for information do we have any blind people here no, no sorry mute do we have any mute okay do we have any lip readers in here <laughs> What did he say? Are there any English translations for Happy's blog, Shady Fox? Did you ever win versus Moon in a major? Yeah, a few. WEG 2006, WCG 2008, and WEM 2009. But he beat me in the super fight. Warcraft World War, they were more like show matches. Like Moon was really good at prepared matches. One opponent, two weeks of prep. He would destroy me 3-0 in those. But I was sometimes better at uh, spontaneous multi-match tourneys where you play like many players over the course of a weekend so he doesn't get to solo prep per player as much. He would get like more nervous in those type of finals than if he gets like full prep. It kind of fits the race as well. Orc is better at like pillaging, pillaging, raiding through a tournament. Whereas Night Elf is better at like setting up a really meticulously planned evil strategy with uh, hidden wisps and stuff. Dude, you destroyed his ass. I wouldn't say that. It's our relationship was professional and rivalry, but dude, you destroyed his ass on WCG final. Who cares about show matches? I say show matches, but they were for ten thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars won, the other for ten thousand. Winner takes all. So, show match, yes. Uh, small money, no. <laughs> like I, I literally traveled to Korea for the ten thousand dollar and then went back home again. We had a crowd of like 5,000 people. Yes, my my white creature is sleeping right now. Three, 
Greetings, friend. I love it when you mix up the stream with commentary. Thanks for a great stream. Hey, glad you like it. Thank you very much. AHTF. 57 months. Three more months and you got popcorn. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Advanced Schnitzel, Hunty King, Ufo, Stifalus, Forden, Nuki, Aleoth, Snob, Lord Birnido, Murgle, Murgle, and Benkovk. Thank you for the subs. I remember Super Fight, the winner got 25, loser got 10. 10 10k for getting 3 out. I played Super Ooh, Fight. I didn't get 10k for losing, has. Are you thinking of like a different tourney? I mean, different game? Like Brood War or what? I played Super Fight. It was 10k, 0k. I lost, so I should know. Maybe I should call them. Where's my 10k? The moon got 25. Moon's like, no, I got 10k. Okay, sorry. I withdraw my lawyer army. I want my money, lich. So, again, as long as moon doesn't do straight natural creeping, happy forfeits the immediate harass. Didn't work that well for him on Echo Isles. Moon is like, I got 35k. I don't know what's wrong. Say the truth, you arranged it 5k, 5k. No, I didn't. There is a website, eSports Earnings. It's not 100% accurate, but it's not too bad to elect. Faust Sketcher, thank you very much for subbing 11 months. Snauza and Nick the Big and No Giblin, thank you for subbing. Snauza, Snooza, you've got the new Peon subscriber remote. Cute beyond. You'll get another emote soon too, Possum Hans. We're bringing them out piecemeal. Crypto says total prize money earned grubby 360k from 157 tournaments. Huh. Seems okay. But part of that is from StarCraft, right? Hey, Corby House Logan must be happy now that the heat wave is gone. Yeah, definitely can keep him outside for longer. But I have to say, even in 30 plus Celsius, he burns energy outside like a crazy. He doesn't mind clowning around at all, even in the... Like, when Logan or when the dog gets hot, when Logan gets hot, he starts making this sound. As soon as I hear that, I know to cool him down. But it hasn't been that bad recently. Uh, there's plenty of shade in our garden, so he can find somewhere nice to chill out. Greetings, Thank you very much for subbing Mal Hasari. Uh, there's plenty of ways to cool a dog down. Uh, I can I can encourage him to drink water. By adding a bit of yogurt to his water. Uh, you can wet their paws or give them a pool to play in. You can bring them inside to your air conditioned room. Give the ice cubes or cold stuffs like uh, frozen fruit or frozen veg or frozen meat. And back to the replay, yes. <laughs> By the way, does anyone want more processionary oak? Uh, caterpillar facts anyway so uh, in this game in this game it's going to be Ancient of Wind right I need to go a little bit back one 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 uh, I can answer that later Cairo Dollar shy of three hundred thousand dollars in WC three. You're almost there, buddy. All right, I'll try not to die until that happens for the Nuki. So just a lot of creeping by Death Knight. Uh, 
Actually, the bigger the tournaments, the more safe people play, the fewer all-ins they do, incubator. People all feel fine to do all-ins uh, in ladder and small tourneys, but you always see people playing more safe, and it's not just fear, it's because people get better and better at defense, and they save their best play for the big tourneys. That's why you don't... That's why you see what you call stalemate games. I don't really see these games as stalemate. True stalemates are 80 to 100 food and no attacking. That hasn't really happened much. But it's true that game length always goes up at the bigger tourneys. That's also because people are more evenly matched. So Happy here does the mercenary camp. At this time, I haven't accounted for every single skeleton that Happy sent. But it seems to be that he's aware that he's up against fairy dragons because this game he saves up Cryptians and web he's got the five ghouls that he usually has i hope the show is base at some point are you even close to these guys in terms of gameplay well i've beaten moon in three premier tournament grand finals obviously his consistency or let's say his regaining of shape over uh, a longer period of time like him coming back now and pro playing and being the best again that's like super impressive there's no takeaway from that whatsoever Greetings, none at all uh, but i have done it in the past and i've beaten happy as well at this time obviously moon is the best elf happy is the best undead and happy three owed me uh, last time i met moon was like two years ago in the show match no prize money I won 1-0. He went Beastmaster first. Would I beat his keeper alchemist or solo keeper now? Probably not. There's many elves I can't beat right now with that style. Uh, yeah. So am I close? I'm close enough to feel comfortable about it. Uh, at the same time, of course, they are playing it better. Now, as long as I keep playing four races and focus on the stream, that's going to be a different priority than... Uh, than, than playing at the pro tourneys and that's how i like it right now so yeah. closer than many further still so this game moon went for hippo rider and demon hunter second uh alchemist did get oh beautiful coil dodge right i think moon is the very most old school active player i used to be that too but then moon is now so he saves up the Fiends. Obviously at some point Happy must have scouted the absence of a Hunter's Hole and the presence of the Tree of Life. Put two and two together and realized it's going to be Hippo Riders. So he went Fiends and Web. I guess in my games today as Undead I'd be afraid to get it wrong. Uh, if, I don't, if my Skeleton Scout doesn't come through. But obviously he's doing it really well. Demon Under Second feels very very good when you're playing this style. Because... Undead relies a lot on coils to keep their Kripfians alive. Alchemist used to be better, but that's because he was overbuffed. Demon, design-wise, actually makes more sense with this style. Again, that relentless coiling, even for single archers, by Happy. He tries to keep his DK away here, but I think he fails. He wanted to solo creep his Lich, but you can see the DK XP go up. Lich would have been 1.9, but it's now only 1.6. Yeah, I think Demon Hunter is very important. But it's not the first time we see Demon Hunter second. Do you think Sweet and Ghost Up were more talented than Happy in 120? I mean, talent. Talent thrives under hard work, good motivation, good work ethic, and good habits. Hard work is very important. It's very hard to gauge someone's talent. It's equally hard to compare people's hard work. One time a player told me, I should always be able to beat you because I practice harder than you. Okay, so the more time you put in, the less you sleep, whether you have good quality practice or not, you're supposed to win. So it's only about how little do you sleep and then you're a winner. Stupid argument. Uh, hard work pays off and talent pays off, but talent flourishes under hard work. Uh, sweet and ghost stop. If they kept playing until now, they would be better. At the same time though, their psyche is different. They're different people. Different people want different things. They have talent for different things. Is keeping your motivation up for one game for a long time, is that talent? Is that tunnel vision? 
Do you lack other interests or hobbies? Are you so simple that you enjoy doing the same thing all the time? There's so many different ways to explain how you keep your motivation. But in the end, without motivation, you can try like to be like happy or moon or sweet or ghost stop or whatever. But if you have no motivation, you get bored or frustrated and get a burnout. Some people's minds align well with doing certain things in life and others don't. Some things come easier to one person, but difficult to another. Is that Every talent? It's just difference, right? You can call it talent if you like. But let's say I find someone that works harder than me and I think he's smarter than me and he picks up the game quicker than me. So he's better in every way, but he gets bored after a year and I keep enjoying it for 10 years. After two years, I'm better. Is that talent? Motivation is very important. Okay, now the crazy micro starts. It's a sort of talent, I guess, but it's, I call it the alignment of the mind or like the, 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 the degree to which something suits you. So two fiends against six air, one hippo off, one hippo without a rider, full detonates on the DK, no mana potion, and happy does not back off. His ghouls don't instantly die. He's already wept and killed three air units. His ghouls are getting focused. He saves two ghouls. <laughs> so good. Kappa Caparino and Master Milson, thank you for the subs. So at this point, Moon would really benefit from another Wisp. There was like three skellies. I still see them, so Moon didn't do it. Shall we just watch this with commentary? Because this one is like quite funny too. A little bit. Units against Orc, against Night Elf. So much value. Statue might be gone here. Again, mana burn for 38. Lich has also nothing to work with. It's only right clicks by Happy. Is he overestimating, uh, <laughs> underestimating his strength again? Or his sustain? No, he's just killing stuff. Not too many fiends left though. There's one more entangle ready, aiming for that fiend. The spell will be there, but it's too late for the save. Fiend will be falling. Happy needs level four for the level two aura, I think. He's close, he gets it. Okay, can he chase now or at least run away? Looks like Moon is getting double kill here if he gets somehow in range, but two more kills for Happy if he follows thru through. Look, he switched the orb to DK for a bit. As his crypt fiend count dissipated, he actually made that switch that people asked about earlier as well. He seems to be happy to trade fairly equally, but man, he like got rid of five supply lead or something. Happy's very close to another big level up, level three lich almost. And for now, Moon going back to the main. He used a lot of wisps, I think, earlier yeah. there in the gold mine. Yeah. But he still seems to be mining decently well. No statue at the moment for Happy. Big problem. He needs those statues at all times to provide the region from the back. A lot of fairies coming in. Happy has to retreat. Again, he's a little greedy. Doesn't want to use the town portal. And willing to fight, apparently, without This, this looks so bad. No coil for DK. Two Kripfians. One destroyer against nine fairy dragons. With a half mana keeper and demon. Mana burn should be coming in against the Lich very soon to prevent that Nova. No, ends up on the DK. Just don't get DH. hit. Level two aura, very very helpful. Look at right the destroyer. Now. The destroyer a little too far forward. Quickly enough with the move away, but still no coil. Remember, demon hunter though also dropping lower HP. The damage from the Lich is starting to add up. Now he's level three, and this level two aura dude is saving him so many units. So crazy, but this one will fall. The Demon Hunter again out of the fight. Maybe chance for more kills as the Keeper isn't here yet. The Destroyer save. You saw it in the bottom left of the screen. So crazy. <laughs> Still comes in for the Devour. Saves the Crypt oh, and, and flies away save. on time. Oh. Oh, he had a second there to yeah. use the coil, but he got burned a little too slow by Happy for once. Dead. The Destroyer is going to fall, yep, but he can morph more. Lich is being... Under attack a little. Damage is ending up on those fairies. Still three webs. Happy is not kiting though. Losing this one. Sacrifices it for more mana, which will be the burned demon? soon. The demon is out of the fight soon with the staff. But more kills for Happy. But Moon's supply. 
plummeting down to 44 yep. only. Happy yep. at 44 himself. I don't think Moon ever had Boots uh, ability on, on Demon Hunter, Olaf. I don't think he ever had gold for it. It would be kind of cool to catch stray units. But normally that's what Entangle is for, I guess. And maybe it's good, but... It's a pretty big investment, 250 gold. That means like one and a half fairy dragons fewer. And Moon only 50 supply with this mass air army. You want to be at least at 60. You don't want to have to fight before that. Straight up battles with mass air are not working. We've seen 1 to 0 fighting this with 20, 25 supply. Six Griffians now against now. 10 fairies. Oh no, they're fake. Wait, is it really six? Oh, the overlay actually counts the fakes. That's funny. Yeah. True. This was so cool because the illusions got taken out first. Entangle on an illusion. No mana burn here against the DK at least. Now the illusions all taken out pretty quick. They were fake, Ella Giggle. Plenty of fiends still left alive. The lich on the front line getting the levels, and so is the DK level five already. Must be aura at this point, actually. Dashing out the Nova immediately as soon as he had the mana. That might be the last one. At this point, it's like easy mode for Happy, but as a viewer, I'm still kept in suspended animation. That's a little problem. But it's easy for him already. That's nice, and he finds the way back. They're so fast. The safety? No, they don't. Level three aura. I'm pretty sure it is. Making them so quick, the keeper dropping lower there as well. Somewhat the fairy dragons, though, all just you can dispel yeah, illusion, yes, but that would cost them two wisps per fiend or one to reveal who's real. No TP and no potion. What's he doing? Lich is not chasing, but he is definitely out of this fight. More kills, he wants more experience, he wants that level five Lich. And he's Moon getting more supply. Kills. Moon is dropping lower. And more webs. No, more kills. No lumber. Can't use wisp really. So at this point, it's uh, mostly over. Here's the final fight. Illusions here confusing. Doesn't know which one the real demon hunter is, perhaps. But he doesn't have to aim for him. Now he knows the real one, though. Can't just take out the fairies. It's so easy to micro against this now. It's <laughs> always a sign when the undead stops to kite and stays in the straight up battle. This is your game apparently. Moon is almost losing the demon hunter, staffs him out. No mana burn here Every anymore. Is webbed. Yep, there's no damage. The keeper is the only source of damage. Level five for the lid. GG! Happy has <laughs> match points! <laughs> On one of the strongest maps for Moon, Happy still makes it work. This micro how, I don't know, I need like a counter how often I said this in this tournament. How many units did he save in the deep, little girl got deep, tired deep range, <laughs> HP range? This is so uh, she reminds me of Cassandra. Crazy. There was one game, an undead game, so uh, at a clan war. Uh, I was playing a clan war and my teammate was an undead. Uh, Hasu no, not my teammate, not my teammate. Hasuops was playing undead against Soju on Twisted Meadows. Uh, he made it a 70 minute game with gargoyles on every island. And then uh, I was watching in rapt excitement. And generally, Cassandra loves watching as well. But anyway, I looked to the side and she's sleeping in her chair. <laughs> and it's boring. Twisted Meadows. Oh. No, but the thing is, you see Moon do that esports head shake. Foggy said it's a psychological trick to get bad thoughts out of mind. Actually, dogs do that. When a dog uh, changes his mind uh, on a certain path of action, for example, they are looking to play with a bone, you say stop, and they don't listen to you, they don't react, right? But when they accept it, they will give a shake, like they understand your disciplinary action or your command. When they shake, they clear their head of a certain action and then they, they're they ready to take... Like, you know your dog listen. There's a, like a way to say, okay, I changed my mind. It's when they shake. But I don't think the esports head shake is that. I think it is a, a visual expression of an inner... There's a small defeatist voice inside. Real grit doesn't have an esports head shake because you know you're so good you're gonna win despite how good your opponent is you don't need to do an esports head shake
I've never seen much good come from the esports headshake. So, Ancient of War in a very funny location. Yeah, he's more risk taking this game. People g get more loose aggressive after they partially give up. Like when you feel your opponent is so good you can't win straight up, you do the esports head shake and you take bigger risks. You get volatile. I've I've done similar head shakes before and I've I've caught my own mental mistakes there too. It's funny because he was just searching for a sheep. Had Moon played a lot of Undead on Twisted, he would know that Undead sometimes look for sheep here. I don't think Happy was even looking for the AOW. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But he didn't even check the Ancient of War location on the red, on the orange camp. I think he just wanted to make skeletons, maybe. Yes, sir, Cyclogenesis, sir. Yeah, the Wisp looked a little fake too, Chuddy. I, I, I feel that way too, that Happy sent something about the Wisp scouting. What's the point of finding a sheep? You don't like mutton stew, Operek? Uh, you can make skeletons from it. Uh, undeads generally remember where the sheep could roughly be so that they can make skellies. Altar placement says where the Inch of War is. That's true too, Gonza. It's just all together there's like a, pic a picture being drawn. Look at this, second age of war. This archer movement going to the top, skeleton is following it. Archer suddenly veers off to the left and back down again because he doesn't want to show what's what. Goes to the south. Now he goes to the left. So this archer already changed direction twice. First it was going straight north then to the west and then south and now he's going west again that was a little bit like eh, what are you trying to hide because generally when people change with their unit that's being chased by you they change to a direction it's the exact opposite of where they don't want you to look look at moon's face guys Duck face now. Finds the Ancient of War as well. And Happy even slaps it just to let him know that he found it. Because he wants to mental break Moon. True. Or oh, was he actually not looking at the minimap? He used to be a Starcraft pro. He sees the he sees the Ancient of War. This is a massive tell. So what now? How to defend this now? He knows what's coming. Second, Second crypt. crypt. Mass fiends, right? Town is under could be guards or as could, well. Could be guards, yeah. Keep the APs from coming up as long as they don't. Moon is like sighing and stuff. <laughs> Plan B, C, D, F, G. Jojo Joshua123, thank you very much for subbing. Moon looks so mature. Moon's a father of two. He is an adult. Have you ever seen the dark side of the moon? No, Chuddy. No one can see it. I would have to fly a probe up, you know. You know where. And I don't do that. I don't fly probes up anywhere. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to analyst this game. Yoink. Yeah.
Yeah, love how happy just harasses with DK, but doesn't take 500 damage. Truly inspiring. Isn't it just? Like, I don't get it. Let's look at it again. How does a happy avoid taking all the damages in the world? So he shows up here with the Death Knight. He still has zero experience, by the way. Do we always see the same side of the moon or it's rotating somehow? We always see the same side of the moon, Drakthar. It is rotating, but it is our moon, so it stays in perspective to us. That's why, like, the Chinese landing um, a mission on the dark side of the moon recently was uh, interesting. It's tidal locked. But I thought you can't explain the tides. They go in, they go out. So it looks like he just avoids damage, Kaiser. Okay, thanks. I feel smarter tonight. Anytime you want to feel smarter, just come to this Twitch chat. There's a lot of smart people here. And to prove it, all the smart people can spam XD now. A lot of smart people. So he comes in with the double garg. Hey, hey, I don't get it. Why doesn't Moon surround the DK? Yes, he has staff of teleport, but why not just entangle and surround it? He will staff away, and then you don't have to contend with his damage anymore. He's got the mana for it now. Ah, just too late, I guess. I guess Happy pulled back the second that Keeper got 74 mana. Yeah, that makes sense. Good split by Moon as well, sending the Huntresses after the DK. Look at this. These gargs were actually a little bit late, the caster said. I didn't quite see the build. I think the casters have an observer POV as well, so they can get more info than we can from the stream. But look at this. Two new gargs. He flies in every now and then with the other two, and he gets to cancel. So that's huge. So Moon has now been cancelled on his first Age of War, second Age of War, the AP Rush, and the Tree of Life. So four plans have been uh, cancelled. He can now go to the one base style. I actually don't know much about crickets yet. I haven't read about their Wikipedia page. It's an Ixosu. But if you like hearing about and subscribing to Cricket Facts, I can read about them next time. Two. <laughs> Two. Oh my god, this again. Happy is still level 1.3. And he's got tier 3, I think. So, every time I go DK, Mask, Garg, Solo, Hero... I always, always, always lose my Keth Knight. My Keth Knight. Kneth died. Neth. Neth. Neth died. Anyway, Death Knight. I always lose it. People were saying Happy is too one dimensional, but he actually showed a whole arsenal of different strategies. Yeah. His opening is always the same, but he reacts to what he sees. The only single dimensionalness of uh, Happy that we saw at this tournament was that he wins. That's pretty one dimensional. Never like try losing a bit, maybe a draw here or there, possibly a disconnect. Just one dimensionally winning. <laughs> Grub lol. So, Moon has been stuck to one base. One dimensional. That's nice. Your deadbeat dad. Pun missed. Guys, look at this. Hold up.
Deadbeat dad with the dad joke of the year. <laughs> That music though, that was pretty monkey ass. I remember that from a custom map. Maybe Uther Party. I didn't know it was a Warcraft original. So this is actually the sick fight that, you know, people will remember. It was really sick micro by Moon. And he's also fighting one versus one base, which is generally suicide against Undead as Night Elf. But look at this, the Gargs aren't killing anything. I was watching this and I was just thinking, Insane by Moon, right? But he ends up saving like a lot of units with red. But those units are Huntresses. Like that Huntress survives, like great job saving it. But he might as well run it into a meat grinder for all the use it is. Like he'd rather have minced meat right now than that Huntress to ever heal back to full. Because not that useful against Gargs. It's good against Ghouls, I guess. He just coiled the Alchemist, which wouldn't have died anyway. But would be very low. But it also leveled up and coil blocked the invil. Very, very nice kiting by Moon. And yeah, he killed a lot here. That Garg won't die because of regen and armor. But when he comes in with more units, he can maybe take it out. So Moon is 56 food. So for all his kiting and saving and preservation, he is still in upkeep. Happy is not. And although he has a 15 foot lead, unless you can translate that to a win, it's it's a blessing and a curse. Run the Huntress into the camp, cancel one Dryad, stay on 50. But I think Moon is experienced as well. He knows all about upkeep management and he decides falling back to 50 is not an option. This is not a game where he can pussyfoot around and say, well, I'm going to play macro because he's going to be up against Lich with Orb. He's going to be up against Mass Gargs, maybe with upgrades. This is not a proposition that gets any better for him. He feels the best way to take this game is to flood in a surprising manner with mass units. And it's really good adaptation by Moon actually, because if you just try to play the same game as your opponents, which they play better, the game of efficiency, the game of patience, of macro, but your army isn't designed to do that because Dryads are not long mainstay units in one versus one base. How about instead playing to your strength? Yes, it's uncomfortable, you're over 50 food, but on the flip side, dryads are cheap. You can keep producing over 50 if you're making dryads. They're very supply inefficient dryads. So actually 50 food dryad armies are really weak, but it's very easy to go to 70. So he launches an attack. Can you believe it with alchemist level two, so bad? But he figures, maybe you think this is like I'm expanding again because that's what Night Elf does and I'm gonna attack you with a 62 food army or 58 or maybe I'm gonna do moon style and run around the map and expand everywhere. He would only succeed in making himself even weaker in a game that he's already very far behind in. So Moon actually decided to try and overwhelm here with sheer numbers and I feel like probably it was the right call. It's mental has QT. It's not the first time Moon got so pressured and nervous in the finals that he may not have played the best strategy on Twisted Meadows. Maybe you remember my WCG game against him in 2008. He just played Talents against me twice, won once, nearly won the second, didn't go Talents on Twisted. Now granted Twisted is not the best talent map versus Orc, but still, like do one two tricks to get ahead and it's gonna work just fine. But instead he went for Bears. That's interesting, Foggy was telling the opposite about that fight. You mean the opposite, like it was a bad or uh, bad intention really fight? Insane. Like it was ill-advised to do a fight like that? I think it was his only chance. He's currently got happy to 39 food, he's 57. Of course, the standard is not to do what Moon did. That's what makes it so smart. Unless it looks awful, like we've seen some attacks by Hunter or Foggy or something. They do an attack, they just get smashed. And then you're like, well, that was bad. Like Hunter had one game against Fly. He nearly won on Echo Isles. Like, can you believe it? Hunter played standard Hunter style against Fly on Echo. Killed four grunts, lost nothing. 
expanded for free. Mossed to 55 food. Had better heroes, unit count, everything. And then he attacked with 55 food with fully double base, by, double base mining against one base fly who was literally camping on snake wards in his base. Hunter threw that game so bad. Attacking without invul, staff of Prezi and TP like he always does. But just too soon really. It's pure inexperience and an attack and it looks bad and it was bad. This is so different from Moon because he's literally attacking into Happy who's so comfortable that he's expanding before Moon is. And Moon now has nearly double the supply. The fact that Happy doesn't like lose straight up here is just, it's both luck and incredible play by Happy. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And Tangle! <laughs> Too bad about that animation of Entangle. Moon was on level three, 2.2 Alchemist. No base and six of his plants got shut down and he nearly won right here, right now. 50 HP difference almost. Happy past period. Yeah. Look, happy no period. Happy no period. 150. One, 168 keeper. Now keeper drops under 150. DK 120. 138 coil. So he only had an overkill of 2. Keeper died with an overkill of 2 damage. Period pass. Actually, the percentual increase of passing the period at this point is very little. He's got 86 life now. Passing the period would give him maybe 9 HP. He, you get 170, 150, 175, 150 health on a total of 1k. Gives him maybe 12 HP. 12. Yeah, 150 health on 11, like on 1025. It gives him 14 HP or something. He's 86, 74, 67, 64, 62, 61. And parry up to unlike strength doesn't give you bonus regen. So it did not save him the parry up. Yeah, if Entangle wasn't nerfed and had the old range, then both heroes would have died. DK and Keeper. And Moon could have body blocked the DK with a Dryad. Yes, it's true. But he was, you know, there was many things going on, I suppose. It's just important to remember that in this moment, it was winnable for Moon. He nearly killed DK, might not have lost Keeper if he did a body block on the DK. And he's got a running base now. But don't forget where he came from. He nearly nearly won the game with alchemist level 268 pop flash it proves it was the right call he just needed to micro it better but happy was destined to win this sometimes you get lucky like that you win thanks to that kind of luck but you're just better than than the oppo it's it's really cool My favorite part of these games is watching Happy with no lag. He waits so much longer to coil stuff than when he plays on NetEase. Yeah, that's really cool. And let me tell you guys about the hidden element of whether you're playing on a good organization's tournament or a bad organization's tournament. A good organization will make sure that you've got proper conditions, biological need, uh, you know, like uh, food and sleep is going to be in good order and uh, privacy and comfort and stuff and good organizations will make sure that you've got a practice area where you can play to get accustomed to land ping and although that may seem like altruism it isn't of course the tournament benefits from players playing at their highest level if a tournament isn't blatantly biased, which some are, they are going to want every player to play at their best to get the best possible memorable tournament. 
So to give Happy a place where he can practice, and I think he had that, right? Or am I just talking out of my behind? What did he say on his blog? I'm assuming he had a PC to practice on. He had it, they had it. Yeah, did they have canned bread too? Or anyway, you can bring it from home, it's canned bread. Uh, to get a practice PC, accustoms you to LAN ping, and it makes you be able to play better when the tournament comes. You're gonna be able to make those close calls that are so memorable and so exciting and unique to Warcraft 3. And then there's tournaments that are like, well, you're here for a week, but we don't care if you get to practice. We couldn't be bothered to set it up or we didn't want to spend budgets on it or we had no budget. Well, then you're just sitting around waiting for your match. No practice and you need a lot of mental fortitude to summon your best level without having any warming up. Plus, you're used to playing with ping. You're not going to play as good as you could. However, there's one thing they could still do better. It's table and chair. The Chinese players are very easy going when it comes to conditions. Probably either because it's culturally unacceptable to complain to the organization about the condition or to there is no space for a player's team or agent to bring up conditions with uh, the tournament and for them to then act on it. Like no, it's, there's not enough awareness on it or it's because they simply don't care. Maybe their home conditions are like quite random or, or bad or whatever. So they don't care about good conditions. They don't know what it feels like. But if you, uh, if you come up with, uh, like if you have a really solid setup at home, 120 inch, ah, not 120 inch monitor, 120 hertz monitor, 120 hertz monitor and a good table and a good chair, you go to a tournament, it's all crap. What are you going to do? They're going to say things like, well, every player has the same conditions. Yeah, sure. But one player is six foot three and another player is five foot eight. What do you mean same conditions? So the best thing as a tournament is to offer flexibility of conditions to players. Their own aircon, possibly uh, a neutral table or maybe even a raisable table. I, we just got a table at home that we can uh, bring up and down with the electronics. Raisable chair, adjustable armrest. That's the real dream. That's the real ideal f setting for a player. If you want players to play their best, give them that. There's nothing on him! Alchemist dead and now no asset form! The meat wagons, the damage dealers are out to what the keeper! Oh, oh, it will potion spread. saves him, but was that the last time? Yes! We have a Western World Champion! Happy, he's not considering himself a competitive player, and you know what? Because there's no competition for the Russian! $30,000 best in the world! Amazing performance by Happy. Getting the title, the first place, oh, the championship, the, the trophy, the, the throne to the Emperor. He claims it. 30k? No, not even close. 29 and a half K way man in China as well there's no doubt there's absolutely no doubt Lin dead TH dead moon dead is that what happens when you lose as an Asian player to a Western or did he not mean it literally West has yes. the first champion. That's too bad. Since it's the last time we'll have a tournament like this. The champion, the first European player who win this title. Come on, I know you have a lot of things to share with us. Well, I certainly didn't expect it to win the tournament. I am uh, sincerely happy about it. And, well, I simply don't know what else to say. Completely unexpected. Feels great. 他说他非常开心，他从来没有想过自己可以赢得这样的一个冠军。Happy是第一个欧洲选手获得这样的殊荣的，我们把掌声送给他，因为我看得出他心跳非常的紧张。And now you have two hundred thousand prize money all together. How would you like to spend it? Have you ever think about it? No, probably gonna save up for future, like always. <laughs> <laughs> you can put it together with the 
$200 he won playing against me. I love his honesty here. Like, it's the best thing, right? Like, people don't always like to hear it. Like, vodka!